Welcome to Worship with DeSoto Presbyterian Church. We hope you will join us each Sunday on YouTube through the duration of the coronavirus emergency. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us worship God. Let us pray. God, creator of all that is, who through your mercy has given us life itself, we thank you. We're grateful for each new day, for the gifts you give us, for the joy you bring us, for the miracles that surround us, for your love, for your guidance, for your support. We thank you. Your grace is beyond human understanding, and for that, we are eternally grateful. Be with us as we worship God today in our separate homes and throughout our lives. Amen. Our scripture today is Matthew 13, 24 through 30, and 36 through 43. He put forth them another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who has sowed good seed in a field, but while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seeds in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The slave said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, No, for in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let them both grow together until the harvest, 
And at the harvest time, I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first and bind them into bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Then he left the crowds and went into the house, and his disciples approached him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, The one who sows the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world, and the good seeds are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one. And the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are the angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers, and they will throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Let anyone with ears listen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. When I was in seminary, I had a professor who, when she was teaching New Testament, and we did Book of Matthew, would stop as we came to a statement every time and had the class repeat in unison, and there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth because it appears so many times. But that's the point. The point in this scripture is that at the end of time, there will be a division, a division of those who are the weeds and those who are the wheat. Those who follow Christ will be gathered together for eternity with their God. And those who are not followers of Christ, who are not believers in the living God, will be gathered together and thrown into the fire, according to this. So, we have to ask ourselves, where do we belong at the end of time? And I think it's safe to say that we know that we belong to the Father through the Son, Jesus Christ. And we look at this scripture and you can't help but wonder why it is the disciples couldn't understand it, couldn't discern the meaning without an explanation. Sometimes it's very hard to take a parable, an explanation of this sort, and apply it to ourselves. It's easy to look at it and say, okay, we know where he's going at the end, but it's very hard to apply it when you look at yourself. Jesus is telling us what to expect. And he's telling us what we need to do. We need to follow him in all things. We need to be obedient to Christ. Follow what he says and what he commands. And we all know that what he commands is to love the Lord with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength and our neighbors as ourselves. Those are the two things he told us without question. And I think sometimes they are the hardest to do. If you ask someone to love their neighbor, who seems most unlovable, and we've seen a lot of that recently, where people didn't love each other, and they certainly didn't make themselves lovable, but God tells us we have to love them. It would be much easier to go out and say, go slay a dragon. Probably we would take that on with pride and equip ourselves with swords or perhaps in this case, high velocity weapons. Check out where we could find a dragon, pack up and go on a quest. That would seem important. That would seem exciting. That would be the kind of thing you'd expect to be asked, to go on a quest, perhaps in this world, not dragons, but the modern equivalent, were to go out and stand against evil in some magnificent form. 
But that's actually not what Jesus asks of us. He doesn't ask us to go out and be the keeper of everyone. He doesn't ask us to go out and challenge bad things. He asks us to love our neighbor. And loving your neighbor is hard. But worse yet, loving your neighbor is not spectacular. They, people notice if you go out to slay dragons, even modern ones. But nobody notices you when you're simply kind to the people in this world around you. When you reach out and touch them and do something nice. When you stand up quietly for what is right. When you love people, even unlovable people, because they are your neighbors. And that's what Christ asks us to do. And he gives us instructions on how to do it. It's easy. Treat everyone the way you want to be treated. That's the easy answer. If we do that, we are loving our neighbor. But like I said, that doesn't get you notoriety. You don't end up in the newspaper for that. You certainly do if you sit on your porch with guns. That doesn't get you the sense of having done something great, but you have. You've done some of the greatest and hardest things there are. You've given a gift to someone else, a silent, quiet gift of caring about them, a gift that can change lives and change history, though you may never know it. The gift of God shared with other people is the best gift you can give them. And that is what Christ calls us to do. If we want to be thrown into his barn at the end of time, if we want to be the ones that go to spend eternity with Christ, then we are asked to be Christ's people in this lifetime. And that is the goal to follow Christ, to love one another, and to be the Christians we are called to be. In this scripture, it ends with anyone who has an ear, listen. And that is what Christ asks us to do. Listen to his words, follow them, and be his faithful disciples. Amen. Let us pray. Merciful Father, we pray for all who find themselves ill, those who are recovering, those who are adjusting to new lifestyles, those who are in need of your healing touch, those who are fearful in this difficult time, and those who are depressed. Be with all your people as they struggle with new realities that they never thought were possible. Grant to each the peace and healing that only comes from you. Give them your blessing and your love and surround them with your peace. We ask your blessing on all those 
who work to keep us safe and healthy during this difficult time. Keep a loving watch over them as they risk themselves for others. Give them moments of peace to allow them to recoup, to recover and fight again. Give them health and safety and let them know they are appreciated by all whom they serve. We ask for wisdom and guidance for the leaders of this world. Give them a heart for all of the people of this world. Give them an understanding of what needs to be done, what is best for the people, and the courage to do the right thing. Help them to see beyond their own interest or even their own national interest to what will make a difference in this world where we all are suffering together. And now we pray as Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you, and give you peace. Amen. To send your tithes and offerings, the address is DeSoto Presbyterian Church, Post Office Box 548, DeSoto, Texas, 75123. You can also find us on Facebook.com and our website, DeSotoPresbyterian.org. Please share this video with friends and neighbors.